Good morning and welcome to this week's online worship from Regent Hall Salvation Army. We're on to the second week of our Jesus stories this week and today we're going to be looking at the parable of the precious pearl as found in Matthew's Gospel in chapter 13 and we're going to be waking up to what's most valuable. So before we go any further let's pray together. Father God thank you for this Sunday. We come before you with hearts full of gratitude. You have seen us through another week and we are here at the start of this new week full of hope. Stir in us a desire to grow in our relationships with you. Remind us that it is not just about watching an online service that we worship and come before you, but rather through daily communion with you. Show us how we can be obedient to your call and to your heart. Embrace us with your love. Give us a hunger for your word and help us begin our week this day by connecting with you. Thank you that we can worship in this way and we ask that your word will inform us, your peace will encircle us, your spirit will uphold us and your love will define us. Help us to be a difference in your world so that others will come to know you for themselves. Amen. I'd invite you to join with me in a call to worship which is Psalm 100. The words will hopefully appear on the screen. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen, and welcome to worship. looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it.
mercy and love at the feet of Jesus we cry holy 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 we cry holy 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 we cry holy 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 is the Last Saturday was a very special day in the Salvation Army world. It was the commissioning of the Messengers of the Kingdom session. It was a very different commissioning probably from the one that uh, was envisaged when those cadets went and entered the William Booth Training College two years ago, but it was a very special day nonetheless. It was a day that had been soaked in prayer and it was a day where the Holy Spirit was evident amongst everything that went on. A day where we were able to join with those people being commissioned as Salvation Army officers through the powers and the wonders of technology, even though we weren't able to be with, uh, there with them physically. One of the messengers of the kingdom is very special to us at Regent Hall, and that's Lieutenant Jackie Coates. Jackie has uh, been worshipping with us at Regent Hall during her time at the William Booth College, but Jackie actually grew up at Regent Hall, and she also met Roger, her husband, at Regent Hall. And I believe that Hannah and Amy were also born whilst they were at Regent Hall before they moved out to Staines. Jackie is going to share with us her testimony now. And as we listen to Jackie, I'd encourage you to pray for Jackie and for the family, to pray for the call at Reading Lower Early as they embark on this next chapter together 
as Jackie leads them in these days moving forward. The Kingdom of God is offering up my one life for him. Some of you may remember that sing company or junior choir piece of music entitled One Life to Live. This song was my very first confirmation of God's calling on my life into full-time ministry. My journey into officership has been a long one and I know beyond any shadow of a doubt that God called me into ministry some 40 plus years ago, but I kept putting up barriers. I'm too young. My family needs me. The girls need me. I'm not good enough. I'm too old. I'm sure you get my point. Perhaps in the hope that he would forget all about me and find someone brighter and much more able. As I stand before you today, it's clear he didn't give up, which I'm so grateful for. My final acceptance of his calling came in 2016, when I pushed the door on what this could mean for me and my family. Although still trying to put up some barriers, I commenced my application for a territorial envoy, hoping that this would be enough. After all, I couldn't expect the whole family to give up everything for me. Although accepted and appointed as a territorial envoy, it became apparent that for me, this still wasn't enough. And I continually heard God saying, give up everything and follow me. So for me, this meant selling the family home, leaving my appointment and spending two years at William Booth College, being fully prepared to truly lead that one life for him. As I look back on my life, I can testify to God's faithfulness throughout the numerous challenges life has thrown at me. I can visualize the kingdom of God in my life as being similar to that of completing a jigsaw puzzle, something I've done quite a lot of in lockdown. Each piece representing a part of my life that God has shaped and molded to fit into its place in the puzzle. Having answered his call to officership, I know the puzzle is far from complete, but I'm beginning to see the, the finished picture. As I prepare for future ministry, I'm looking forward to adding more pieces to my puzzle, some of which might be difficult and not easily fit until other things are in place. But I remain confident that the kingdom of God will remain with me.
As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace we have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We've been in the recovery period for a few weeks now, and we've been easing ourselves out of lockdown, and life has been moving forward with different things opening and more people being out and about. We've been able to see more people, being vigilant, of course, to keep to our social distancing measures and the restrictions that once seemed so tight and also so necessary are getting looser. When we first went into lockdown, my family would have regular Zoom calls and we would do family quizzes. I know we weren't alone in doing this. We went for quite a few weeks where each household prepared a quiz for that coming week. It was always quite entertaining. When it was the turn for me and Andrew, one of our questions was this. What item did I wear at both Matthew and Victoria's and Luke and Charlotte's wedding? Now, from what I recall, I think everyone was given a point because they said jewellery. But I had wanted them to be more specific. I'd really wanted them to say what jewellery I had worn to both weddings. Because, like my wedding and my engagement ring, I did wear those to both weddings because I never take them off. If they had been specific in what jewellery I'd worn, they would have got an extra point. Because the other thing that I wore to both weddings was my pearl necklace. I wore my pearls to both weddings. You know, it's not every day that you wear a pearl necklace, is it? And I must admit that my pearls spend most of their time tucked away in my jewellery box. But just occasionally, as a special treat, I'll wear my pearl necklace. When you think of what a pearl actually is though, it's amazing that we find them so beautiful. A pearl comes from a grain of sand that enters the shell of an oyster when it shouldn't really be there. The oyster forms a smooth layer over the grain to protect itself and so the pearl is formed. Something beautiful coming from something that initially could cause damage. But whatever you think about pearls, our parable today is just two small verses from Matthew's Gospel. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. A simple parable. Or is it? I want to ask Jesus questions. What or even who is the pearl of great value? Is Jesus the pearl and when we find him we want him so much we ask how much does it cost? Or are we the pearl of great price and is it Christ who gives up everything to purchase us? There are some theologians out there that say that Jesus is the pearl and suggest that we are the merchant finding happiness and security in him. They go on to say that we search for Jesus and when we find him, it costs us everything. 
Jesus has everything we want and need. Happiness, joy, healing, security, peace, comfort, wisdom, everything. And so when we find Jesus, we say, I want this pearl. How much is it? We're then told that this pearl will cost us everything. All that we have and all that we are. He, the seller, wants it all. All I have and all that I am will come under the ownership of Christ. And then Christ gives it back to me on the understanding that he is the owner and that we are stewards and that everything must be available to be used as Christ needs. I actually love the idea of this story, of everything we have and all that we are coming under the authority and the ownership of Christ. After all, earlier on in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says, If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. My only problem, though, is that in the parable it says that when the merchant, that would be us, finds the pearl, which is Jesus, that he then went and sold everything and bought the pearl. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that we can buy salvation. It doesn't say that we can buy a relationship with Jesus. We can't buy our way into heaven. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9 it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Being in relationship with Jesus, knowing God as our Father, being empowered by the Holy Spirit, are all amazing gifts, freely given to us. We can't buy them. So then, maybe we are the pearl of great price. Think back a minute to how a pearl is formed. A grain of sand enters the oyster and because it could cause damage the oyster forms a protective layer around it creating the pearl. This analogy is often used to describe sin in our lives, something that can cause us damage. But we know that through Jesus our sin was taken from us. Jesus took our sin and he died on the cross in our place. 1 Peter 2 and verse 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Through Christ's sacrifice, we are given a beautiful layer of righteousness, forming a pearl of great value. In Isaiah 61 and verse 10, it says, He has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness. It's a nice analogy, isn't it? Us being a pearl of great price. I'm not sure that it was what Jesus intended when he told the parable. However, I hope it reminds you how valuable you are to God and in turn how valuable Christ is in your life today. The tagline for today's meeting is waking up to what's most valuable. So what's most valuable to you? During the time of lockdown we've had plenty of time to reflect on what's important, what's urgent, what our priorities are. Days haven't always been bright and breezy, have they? Even for those of us for whom lockdown has been good, there have been days where motivation has been lacking and it's been a struggle. But God has been with us through all this, loving us and holding us, giving us strength and grace for each day. My prayer is that as well as you being bowled over by how valuable you are to God, that you've woken up to the most valuable thing in your life, living with Jesus every day, today, now and forever. God bless you.
being with us today and thank you for everyone who has worked behind the scenes in making worship today possible as well as all those who have contributed to worship it was all possible because of you and all the glory goes to God and now a closing benediction based on some verses from Hebrews chapter 13 now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. And Amen. Please remember to join Richard and Carolyn on Wednesday as we have our midweek conversation. This week our conversation will be a celebration of life for Joy Sewell, who we know has been promoted to glory. It's going to be a time of remembering a very special lady who meant such a lot to so many people at Regent Hall. So please join with us all and with Richard and Carolyn on Wednesday for that special time together. And then on Sunday, Sunday the 26th, Richard will be talking about the parable of the two sons and waking up to faithfully following. God bless you. Have a great week and please continue to keep safe.
Thank you.